people kept talking about an audio engine. He said, an audio engine is the equal sign in a math equation. You put one over here, you put a plus sign here, you put a one over here, you put an equal sign, that's your audio engine. If it doesn't say two, your stuff is broken. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixed Best TV. Hope you're having a great day. Today we have a special episode. I have a special guest here with me, Aaron from Pipeline Audio. Hello, Aaron, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Awesome, awesome. And today with Aaron, which is also one of the founder and creator of uh, the DAW Reaper, we are going to talk about DAWs. Which one is better and do they sound different? First, I want to start by asking you, uh, how Reaper came about? Uh, there, there's, there was a whole bunch of different things that led to it, but um, from my end, I can tell you, I was a user of uh, Sonic Foundry at the time, uh, Vegas software. Um, I was coming out of a big studio, and we were, we were one of the studios that that the muse, the recording schools fed. Uh, we had the conservatory close by. They made sure we always had an up-to-date Pro Tools system. We had whatever was the newest thing that the kids were learning on at the school. And we always had teachers over that, that knew how to run the gear. And the software just felt to me like nobody who wrote it or had a hand in writing it had ever really been inside a recording studio. It worked so differently than than how we worked. You know, we're, we're used to having customers paying a lot of money, standing behind us, with their arms crossed, they want to get their work done because they're they're paying. You know, it, I looked at some of your your history. We share a lot of clients and friends, and and you know these are people that don't that, like wasting their time. No. You know, they, they don't only have so much of it. But there were enough people running Pro Tools that I was like, well, you know, it works for somebody. It's 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 got to be good. But it, it didn't feel right to me. Um, we had composers that used Logic at the time. There wasn't really any audio functions in Logic, so that was kind of out of it. Um, Cubase was starting to add audio. And um, Cakewalk had, you know, really, they, they had audio from the beginning, I think, but they're, they're more, still more of a MIDI sequencing app. And all throughout this time, I was talking to, to Sonic Foundry, uh, and they, they became Sony later on, but I would mock up these, like, advertisements of, of features that I'd like to see, and, and how they would actually advertise it on the web or whatever. And, and so I ended up with this crazy, it was like a big, thick book. <laughs> It was all hand-drawn junk of, of what I wanted to see a DAW doing. I was hitting up every developer I could, and you know, Mike was with me. We were, we were trying to find people to, to code this. And then one day, Kenny Joya was talking crap about this Ninjam thing. And it was this, this product that, that Justin Frankel had made where you can play with other people on the web. And it was just the basics of a DAW. You could see it. And I was looking at it, I'm like, man, it, this could be exactly what I wanted. And I talked to the guy and I didn't really know who he was. He he was he would start adding things that I was asking. I was showing him my you know pieces of my book, and um, he told me he was using some like sound blaster or something to to test with. And and so I'm like, oh man, I had a spare 9652 from RME. I took the last ten dollars I had to my name, and I sent him this this um, this RME. It's an audio, old audio interface back in the day, uh, PCI based one. It's still killer. They still make drivers for it and it's still one of the best audio interfaces you can buy. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I used to have one. I used to have one for a long time. They they were like, they never fail. They last forever. <laughs> you know, he told me you don't have to do that. I'm like, no, you ha I have to because you, you gotta be testing on something real. And then he says, hey, check out the new Rolling Stone. And here he is. I don't remember if he's on the cover of Rolling Stone, but he's in there someplace and it says the world's most dangerous geek. And the guy had like millions of dollars and stuff. And so here I am thinking it's this poor guy. I'm going to send him this audio interface. and He's going to be thrilled because, you know, it's nothing he could afford in his life. And I'm like, man, this guy's, this guy's made, of, made of money. Holy crap. But, you know, he never let it get in the way. And, um, you know, that that's kind of how that thing started. And really, it felt like it was just going to be for kind of us and the crossfade guys and other people might not get it and they might not like it came out like a little bit out of frustration you know going with what you said at the beginning that you are not yeah. happy to, uh, i i think you know we we're very similar in that because a lot of things in my life like came up out of frustration because they weren't the way i want it or i would want them to work so at this point we go to the subject of the of the video uh I don't even know, I can't even count how many videos there are out there, how many blog posts, pages on forums talking about 
first of all, well, which DAW it's better, which at this point, I think it's pretty much subjective. And you know, it depends a lot, a lot of depends what you started with. Maybe, you know, your friend had that DAW and you know, you picked along and um, through uh, FL Studio, it took over the trap and hip hop scene. Pro Tools, we can say it's still, you know, where, where it always was, pretty much all the studios, even if they don't use it as a primary DAW, they all have it because, you know, sessions compatibility and, and all that. And Reaper definitely, I want to say, like up there with the with the top. I think it's it's really hard to say the best. I think each DAW kind of has its own strength or sets of things that is better at just because you know they have a more dedicated workflow for MIDI, for example, which Pro Tools yep. is still not that great for MIDI, <laughs> or better for composing, or better it comes with better virtual instrument stock. You know things like this what what's your take um I, I would say that that's that's pretty accurate and one of the examples i always give is um is ableton like you could conceivably do what ableton does in any daw pretty much good luck doing it anywhere near as quickly as you can in ableton i mean it's not even gonna be close i think most DAWs can do most of the same things but but i found out the hard way that some of the routing is still, man, I don't, I don't want to, I'm, I'm so mellow in my old age now. I, I don't say things as negative as I used to, but I want to say that some of the routing is still quite pathetic in, in a lot of DAWs. Yeah. Like, I'm used to, to patch base and, and Reaper's got one. I mean, and no, every single channel inside Reaper has 128 internal channels that you can patch around. And so you can side chain anything to anything. It's insane. Yeah. And if you want to take something in between two plugins and send it to some other channel before it gets to the next plugin, you know, like uh, I, some some DAWs can, some don't stand a chance. <laughs> yeah. You got to make two channels or you got to do some weird stuff. I've always been Pro Tools user, which, which is funny because the first, my very, very first experience in a studio was with Nuendo. Go figure. Oh. And uh, that was my first, I don't know, six weeks in front of a, a DAW, any DAW. <laughs> And then, oh, wow. and then I, I, I started with Pro Tools and I've been you know, on Pro Tools my entire career. That's the other thing. I'm asking you because I actually don't have almost any experience with other DAWs. The only thing that I know because I saw my friends using it is that Reaper seems really fast and efficient. There's also a status of course, in studio for Pro Tools, there still is. For a long time, the industry was was oh, yeah. was connecting the name of Pro Tools with that as a professional, either engineer or studio. It's not that the case anymore yeah. because even though today we have tools that can measure everything, there can be something that we can't measure or that it still make a difference when we listen to it. Uh, so yeah, I, I understand. So you know. A lot of times we call this the God of the Gaps fallacy where, you know, you've, 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 you've shined lights in all the holes and they're like, well, where is it? It must be someplace else. But I, I would not rule out um, stuff because, it, you know, if, if things null, sorry, they null. Yeah, I mean, they null. Yeah. That's a, that's a different story. That's than, a different story. Than even than getting there. Yeah. And, and we don't necessarily know what to measure up. I'm, I'm thinking of an example of um, guitar amp simulation. We, we had, we had. Um, some pretty good papers come out, you know, of that simul analog stuff that I think became overload or whatever. But the guy was putting out white papers that you could really get things at a certain stage where, I mean, ABX, at least on the listening, you, you couldn't tell. And then all of a sudden, these newer types of guitar amp modeling came out and they blew it away. And, and you're like, wait, I mean, they, they still kind of measure the same, but it feels totally different. It acts totally different. And in the end, it sounds quite different than the older ones, though, even though at any one kind of static stage, you could say, oh, this is right. So there's there's always there could be something hiding someplace. Yeah, the variables on on even just one single piece of gear, uh, it, it, there's, there are so many and they constantly change, especially on like a piece of analog gear. So it's really hard. And uh, when you when you put that one piece of hardware, right, or that one amp, which has hundreds of thousands, probably millions of variables uh, on its own into a chain, <laughs> then then it's 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 crazy. I remember I don't know if I'm I don't want to quote him wrong, but Joe told me like once he, he always say this, it says something like uh, 
if you can't hear a difference, but it measured different, it's because you're measuring the wrong thing. You know, think about like, I could measure two things that, that are that measure different and they sound the same because they're below the threshold of, of hearing, for instance. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one of them. There's people out there that claims and they, <laughs> they swear the DAWs have a sound and DAWs yeah. sound different, right? And I've done on my channel a couple of tests, scientific tests, and of course they knew. And um, I've, I always said that if you take all the variables away, which means plugins, which means all the non-possible non-linear process that can be modeled uh, in digital, and you also make sure that you have the DAWs set in the same way. For example, pan law. Many people got into that kind of mistake because just simply they didn't know. You know, the Pro Tools comes stocks with the pan law at minus six, and Nuendo comes with the pan law at minus three. You go summing things and they sound different. And of course they don't know. So I always said, if you take all the variables away, like plugins and everything, and you sum, then they know. They, they just don't have a sound because there's not a special audio engine in them that make yeah. things sound, you know, <clears throat> different. Now we, we have you here. You basically invented <laughs> Reaper, one one of the best dot out there. What's your end? I, I, had, I had a big hand in it. I wouldn't okay. say I invented Let's Reaper. Let's put it, that's, let's begin. <clears throat> Aside from I, I Mixed think... Bus from Harrison, which is, a, you know, purposely designed to sound like saturated. Well, uh, I actually did a video on that, and and the uh, the differences were were pretty far down there for the most part until you really kind of push things, and yeah. we were able to get something out. But um, there was uh, I don't know if you were there used to be these big forum wars where Nika Aldrich, who worked for Sweetwater, but he was like a real Pro Tools expert, digital audio expert. I think it was him who said this, but when it finally came down to it, and we really got in these knockdown dragouts, and we put, people kept talking about an audio engine, he said an audio engine is the equal sign in a math equation. You put one over here, you put a plus sign here, you put a one over here, you put an equal sign, that's your audio engine. If it doesn't say two, your stuff is broken. Like, I don't want something different than what I told it to put in there. Like, I want WYSIWYG. I, I know that there's there's lots of devices out there, like the, these summing mixers and things like that, where they're supposed to add a certain magical something. But I always ask people, what is it that you would put on every single sound you ever made in your life, and it would always sound better? And everybody goes, oh, there's nothing like that. That's stupid. Yeah. And like, so, yeah, then why would you run through it? Nothing, anyway. nothing at all. Yeah. Um, that was my argument when, all along as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, or like, you know, sometimes people ask me, like about converters, right? There's some models of converters out there that they are purposely colored. And I'm like, unless you have it as a second choice because you like to have a color box, why the heck would you want <laughs> your, of all things, your converters colored, you know, when you have everything else that can be colored and add whatever you want to add, why would you want the, that piece of, gear in your studio to be colored, you know, especially if that's exactly. the only thing you have. It, it makes no sense to me. <laughs> and, you know, it, but people would still, no matter how hard we tried, people would either have a better experience and think it sounded better, or they would actually get different sounding things out of their different DAWs. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And it always seemed to me that the easier it was to get your work done, the better your mix was going to sound. And people didn't want to think about it that way. but. We're trying to create this this situation where what you hear in your head comes out the speakers. Yeah. And the quicker I can get people doing that, the happier they're going to be. And, and we started seeing that that, that was kind of true. Um, the guys who were doing MIDI sequencing and Logic that were good at it, they could make the best sounding orchestra arrangements in, in no time, and they would be happy with them. Yeah. Whereas they could struggle their way through MIDI arrangements and other DAWs, and, and, and they were like, hey, I just hired the best MIDI guy in the world. I just hired this orchestra guy. He's the best, man. He knows what he's doing. And yet it sounded better in this other DAW. And it's only because it, it, I think it made it easier for him to get there. And things like pan loss and stuff, I mean, they, they changed the way you work. Yeah. You're not going to have the same experience. And, and I think ergonomics had a lot to do with it. I think, I think uh, how fast you can get things done in studio, no matter what you do. You're composing, you're arranging, you're recording, you're mixing, or you're mastering. If you're mixing, you're still making art, you're, and, and that, that's an art. You can be, you need to be fast. You need to be fast because you need to keep a fresh perspective. Otherwise, you listen to the thing for like 
10 hours you get used to all the problems that has and, and at that point becomes normal how it sounds and also because you don't want to get stuck into a routing problem that's why i hate patch base and now i had the flock because that i yeah. suck i never remember where i have patched things you know and i had three cable patches and i hated it and sometimes i wouldn't i would just not use that piece of hardware because i'm like i don't remember what it is fuck it you know and i wouldn't use yeah, it and that's that that happens all the time that happens with guitars somebody has his favorite sounding guitar but the thing won't stay in tune so he's not gonna play it yep. you know it, it's it's, it's <laughs> crazy how much that'll knock you down just just some little thing to keep you from working absolutely you know? and, and and the dogs are think are the same like uh they push you to 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 make certain decision this decision a instead of b because yeah. of what you have in front everything everything affects the workflow how fast and how quick you can get to something to something but that concept digested i want to reiterate this this with you taking all these variables away there's no different color on the audio engine and there's nothing that makes logic sound different than pro tools other than you know there shouldn't be um from from time to time things slip through that people like me who are especially gluttons for punishment like to create pathological files that would never happen in the real world yeah but just to show that you can break something yeah but, but what do you think that is though it's like uh we can call it like uh, to to use a metaphor like uh an open door in a security system if that happens it's like a glitch or a programming yeah. no, error. It's almost it's always, always a glitch. It's almost always that, um, especially in the early. So when you're when you're when you're going back out to the real world, you got to get back out to fixed point. Right. And, and um, um, some people forget to to convert between fixed and floating point uh, at at some insert point, and and so for the audience, sorry like me, for the for the audience, not. Uh, while you do things or while you're bouncing your mix, but in programming the DAW, that's what he's yeah, referring. Yeah, in programming the DAW. And, and so somebody like, you know, if somebody's looking for trouble, we say, hey, you know what? I know that insert point's only 24 bit and it's fixed. So I'm going to feed it this much level and it's going to get messed up. Even if it doesn't go out to hardware, even if it stays in software, you, you could mess it up. But I mean, even then, um, most of that is so below where you're going to hear it that it's probably not going to matter. But you, there's there's ways where you can do really stupid things to find errors. <laughs> but in, again, back in the fixed point days, we could break a couple things, but not not where you're going to hear it, not where it was going to be missing base or something. Right. It would just be some tiny little thing. Well, I think that's that's going to be that's going to be very very good to hear for the audience for sure. That's a really good point. And again, you've been dabbling in, in these things and doing these tests for a yeah. long time. So, the defending the purchase it kind of happens, you know, on on everything. You know, you see like that's also why there's so many <laughs> this such heated discussions on on online because when someone talks bad about a piece of gear that someone bought that person spent yeah. the money you can you can't say anything about it and i always say it like that's a comment of someone who already spent the money right i <laughs> I, I did a, i did a a video a long time ago years ago about the very very first generation of summing mixers a hardware summing yeah. mixers and actually this ties up to what we're saying because my problem wasn't really with the Summy mixers. I mean, there's a ton of product out there. Something is not for you, it's not for you. And that was not for me. But it wasn't a, a one piece in particular. It was like the concept of the Summy mixer. And the first generation of Summy mixers were not as useful as some of the new ones are, which have a bunch of actually useful, if you want, functions on them. My point in that video was that the marketing for that first batch of Summy Mixer was the sum in the DAW is broken and is your bottleneck. And that's why your stuff doesn't sound right. Yeah. And so with the mixer, with the Summy Mixer, you eliminate the problem. And I'm like, no, it is, <laughs> it, it does. I mean, unless you fuck up your gain staging, at which point it makes that you, you have bigger problems because you don't know how to mix. <laughs> the, the, the summing in the DAW, what you put in, it, it gives you. So I was like, yeah. that's, you know, you're not, there's, there's no problem to solve. Now, if you like the summing mixer because you like to add, you know, a color box to your mix, 
that's a different thing. Yeah. But my my you know my argument was like, what's wrong with the sum? Like there's nothing wrong with the sum. It's not like it has a limited capacity o other than obviously your your levels. That's what I didn't like. Uh, you know, and just like oh, or the digital sum has a bottleneck. I'm like, no. no, not really. If you if you know how to mix and you gain stage correctly, it doesn't. Now, do you prefer the analog box because it has the color? Hey, you're talking with the right person. Let me look at me. I'm surrounded by gear. I love analog. I'm an analog guy. But again, you want to hate something for the right reason, not for the wrong reasons. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you another one. Like, I think it was one of your videos. Yeah, I would show it to people because it was something I had said my whole life. And it makes people's heads come right off. <laughs> that that this whole thing about tubes warming things oh, up. Yeah. No. Tubes put treble on your stuff so you can hear it when you when it gets lost in the mix, you know? Yeah. When you start cranking that up, you get this screeching presence, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's my Maybe it's like, oh, it's gotta be warm. It's gonna warm it up. I'm like, it ain't gonna warm up crap unless you I mean, it's just gonna be bubbly, you know? Yeah, that was a, that was a very popular video, and a lot of people actually thank me for that video because, uh, yeah, oh, I mean, this was awesome. I think we covered a lot of a lot of points. You guys, comments down below about what's your favorite DAW and what you think about what we just said that they knew and they don't, <laughs> don't sound different. We are curious to see your comments. And uh, Aaron, <laughs> thank you so much. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave your comments down below. Stay safe. And see you next time. All right, see you from Hawaii. Hands on my neck, hands get my throat, throat. Lift me up, up, man, take control, up. Heart is so gone, my type. Don't you know I fall for the bad type? You play the role of an angel pretty well.